Ladies and gentlemen, today is August 21st, 2013, and this is the Can Kale Daily Show number, no, no, 85. I'm your host, Ken Lafferty, and today is Whatever Wednesday, and that means we can do whatever the heck we want, and by popular demand, you guys have been asking me to show a lot of my old work to you guys, so I decided today we're going to be taking a stroll down memory lane. Right? I'm going to be showing you guys the journey, where I began, well, sort of where I began, and where I got to, and now where I think my journey will be leading. And hopefully this will shed some light um, to those of you who are embarking on your own journeys, and kind of, I can show you some of the things that I went through, some of the challenges, and kind of talk about some things that I really enjoyed. So let's go ahead and jump into that, shall we? Uh, what's interesting, there's a very, very interesting story about how I came about wanting to do this today. Uh, I was working on the side comic as usual and uh, I decided, for those of you who actually saw the little teaser that I did, uh, let me pull that up, it was the thing that I put on the Facebook. I had this old character named Mika and she was this little, I don't know, she's just like this pink haired anime maid girl, right? And be like, whoa, I bet you never heard of a character like that. And uh, I decided to redraw her in the style of the cheerleaders from the side comic, right? These chicks with the with this head design. And lately, I've just been like looking at like these simplified heads, and I really have been liking what they do to the character. Even though like I've just reduced the face to like two eyes and a mouth, and then like some little blush lines. It's kind of like Adventure Timey, and I kind of like that. And I was curious as to how that translated over to. Uh, more anime style, like if you add a little more anime influence into it, and I really liked it. And so that kind of prompted me today. It's like, whoa, that's that's kind of interesting. How like all of these influences and things have brought me to where I am today. And uh, I've kind of like dabbled and done a lot of different things in art. I've tried out a bunch of different styles, and I've done a bunch of different lines of work. Now I'm doing comics, which is a very simplified cartoony style. But I was also, you know, working at Riot and doing paintings. So yeah, I actually. Um, I decided to kind of go down to the basement, right, where a lot of our old stuff is, and I found a bunch of old, uh, I was looking for an old sketchbook that I was working with, just because, I don't know, I kind of wanted to see some of my old work. And while I was doing that, I stumbled upon the, a disc. It was like an old backup disc that I had on my computer, then I backed up like all these scans and all these old files. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and just talk about those things today. So this right here is probably, this is very significant, and there's a reason why I wanted to show this first. And that's because this is one of the first drawings that I started to do in like an anime style, right? Prior to this, I was doing a lot of cartoony stuff, a lot of just uh, really, I don't know, it was almost kind of like Simpsons type stuff, but it was just kind of me trying to figure out my own thing. And then I saw anime, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I love the way that this looks, and I want to bring this into my art style. It just really resonated with me. So yeah, we're going to be just jumping through these things, and uh, this is, uh, speaking of the past, right, this is a scan of an old uh, cartoon character that I came up with my friend Meryl, and this was Buzzly, and he had a dog named Cuzzly, which you'll see in a little bit, and this was like our idea for our cartoon show when we were kids. And uh, this is just going to be kind of random stuff coming through, but it's all kind of old stuff back from like the, 2000, the 2000s era, right, so this is like 10 plus years old. And uh, yeah, just, you can see a lot of anime, a lot of babes. I was like, I don't care about drawing guys, but like, I just want to draw, I just want to draw babes, right? I just want to draw girls. And here's Cuzzly, right? And this is Buzzly's dog, and he's basically got like a wily e. coyote nose, and I don't know, he's got like a worm body. I think he had like six legs or something like that, three three sets, six feet, yeah. So uh, that was pretty fun, and that actually kind of bounced around. He always had different amounts of, of legs. There was one point where he had like 12 legs, and then he just had six because I got tired of drawing them all. And uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. So um, anyway, okay, so this is a great <laughs> this is a great picture here. And the reason why I like this picture is because this is back then when I was so naive as to think that digital artists did all of their work with a mouse, right? And I, so I was like, Oh, how did they do that? Oh, I could do that. I could do that, right? So I'm like, I'm going to draw a dragon. And I went into Photoshop, and I started just, like, drawing with the mouse, right? I would just, like, click and, like, draw. That's how you can see the brush strokes. There's no, like, there's no difference and no tapering on the ends because I'm literally drawing this with a mouse. And then I looked at it when I was done with it. I was like, that's okay. It's all right. Like, if you squint your eyes, it's actually pretty good. Not bad. 
you squint your eyes and kind of wiggle your head back and forth, that works. Works really well. And um, you guys are, are giving me all kinds of nice uh, comments today. Someone said they just watched the motion and emotion video. And that's a very interesting thing that I kind of want to talk about tomorrow. Um, that's, that's a video that I did about my morning ritual. And I actually haven't been doing that lately. I haven't been doing it for months, actually. And I'm very, very curious to uh, get back into that and see if it'll work. Because I've been, I've been saying to myself, it's like, that, that crap doesn't work. I was like, I look back on that video, I'm like, that is so stupid. I should just take this video down, you know what I mean? But people keep saying, it's like, oh, this is great, and I tried it, and it worked. And so I just, I, I keep it up. And I need to actually just, I need to be leading by example. Okay, so anyway, back to the art. So this was actually one of my classmates, right? This was a girl by the name of Chelsea, right? And this girl was freaking hot, right? But unfortunately, she wasn't really that interesting she was kind of like really just like beautiful woman but she didn't have anything really going for her right she was kind of like I think she was like into drugs she was starting to get into drugs and you know I was like no no she was up to no good in her high school days right but she was absolutely beautiful and I sat right next to her right so I just look over her and I'd be drawing her like as she was sitting there and uh, yeah <laughs> and it was really easy to draw people in profile so I took advantage of that all right so we're moving on to more anime girls this is Fire Girl. Wow. You're going to notice a trend happening here very, very soon. You're going to notice it be like, hey, let me just take this idea over here and make a girl out of it, right? So this is Fire Girl. And this, again, I was doing this all with uh, mouse, right? So I think the way that I did it was I just laid down, like, shapes. And I think I was, like, going into the, uh, I think I was going into the liquify tool. And I think I was actually, like, pulling the shadows out. You see what I'm talking about? Like I would just pull the shadows for those of you who know what the liquify tool is. And the same thing I did with the fire. So I was like, ooh, I discovered new tools. And then I just mm, do stuff like that. And there's the original drawing. Let's see, what's the date on that? That's 2000, so that is, that is ancient. This is legendary. But look at that amazing costume design and that hair. How does that hair work? I don't, I don't know, I don't know how it works. But, uh, and the anime thing, it's always got the, it's always got the one piece of hair that comes out in the middle. And that's something that's kind of, like, resonated with me. I still really like that a lot. Show! 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 Moving on. Alright, so this is really cool, because this is, like, er, this is, like, the first digital art that I ever did. Again, no tablet, no nothing. I just dropped my, I dropped my pencils in, and this was actually a, the heck? You can actually see, like, the pixels on this thing. Oh, that's so weird. That's so weird. That must be like how the JPEG compresses. Like the crappy JPEG. But anyway, um, yeah, I just dropped my, my picture in and then I was just drawing over top of it. I learned about the lens flare tool, as you can see here. I was like, oh, that's awesome. So I basically stuck it on everything. Like everything that had a shiny surface, it had a lens flare. And it was really awesome. Uh, this was Nova. This was Nova. And this is kind of what I'm talking about with my old faces. Like you notice how, and again, I'm still learning and still improving, but I look at my old faces, and this one actually surprisingly has like the nose sticking out far, um, but later on, my nose would actually kind of like flatten out, and yeah, like just the proportions and the placements of the, the facial features aren't dead on, but it's still nice. I still like it a lot. It's very, very nice. Okay, so this is an example of what I was talking about when, uh, I'm gonna turn on the light. So I'm gonna show you guys some sketches later, and it's a lot easier. The sketches look a lot better with the light off, but I'll just turn it off again when we arrive at that point because it's nice to have my face lit as I'm talking. All right, so where was I? Yes, I always liked to explore different styles, and this was done, this style was actually done by the tag artist or like the spray paint artist that did the album art for Linkin Park's Meteora. And there was like this little guy in the background that he, that he painted, that he spray painted, and I was like, Oh, whoa, that's really cool. That's awesome. I love that style. I love how it just like, this is me like using permanent marker and it was like white out, like putting it back on, like painting it back on and pencil, like shade and stuff. And you'll notice like I was, I, I look back on this now and it's like, oh, I was totally studying this. I was studying this and like writing down all these notes, you know, about like what goes into the style. And I didn't really like, I didn't think about it as studying. I just did it because I wanted to do it, right? I was just interested in, like, what makes that style look cool like that. So, all right, moving on. So this is, remember how there's Fire Girl, now we got to have Ice Girl. So 
not much to this other than her hair was supposed to be kind of like a watery thing I think it's supposed to be like a waterfall something like that and then she has this little orb on her head I don't know what the heck that thing is but it just ended up going there and uh, she has an icy drink and look at this amazing background Photoshop I think I also did this with mouse too so uh, I think it's just like a lighting thing on it and then it's just like some crappy filter thing going on there but it's still pretty nice I like the way that the shadows look on these legs it actually looks pretty nice if anything working with the mouse working under the constraint like this was it taught me how to almost pick colors and work with simplicity and yeah because that was basically what it, all it was it was just two colors and seeing how those two interacted with each other alrighty then moving on to hands I hope the stream is still holding up looks like it is oh yeah and the explosions for hair yeah, that was something I noticed too. I was like, okay, so the anime, you gotta be turning their head like this and their hair needs to come out to here, right? Since then, I have... I actually have done the opposite now. Now the hair like goes way back and it almost like bunches up in the back, as you will see in a moment. Okay, so like hand studies. I was always really, really interested in hands and I like drawing a lot of hands, you know, just every now and then. I wouldn't like sit down and like study my hand and like draw it all the time. But um, I was always interested in like what makes a gesture, right? Like what what uh, allows me to create the the emotion in the hand, right? Because I believe that there's a lot of emotion not only told in the face but the hands too. Hands say so much about what you're trying to say and uh, the emotion of your character. So I really wanted to explore that because I think that's like a really really um, it's a hidden art. All right, guys. So now we're moving into <laughs> something amazing, which is an old comic that I did. And uh, this just goes to show you that, you know, the comic artist is born young, right? So um, we, we don't need to go through the whole thing, but this is basically Patchy the Pirate from SpongeBob SquarePants uh, getting attacked by his parrot. He checks it against the wall, flips it off for some reason. <laughs> I think this is like some story me and my brothers came up with. And then he comes in with a chainsaw, right? You get the cool comic. And I'm learning about layouts. I'm learning about sound effects, learn about all these awesome things. Uh, Spongebob comes along and kicks him right in the nuts and he's laying down and then Patrick comes and he eats the parrot. And I couldn't scan the whole image so you'll just have to use your imagination with uh, what he's doing with that parrot in that panel. Anyway, we're gonna go move <laughs> on. Oh, I'm so bad. I'm so bad. I'm, I'm getting progressively naughtier as the, as the dailies go on. Alright, so Moving on, uh, this is Pirate Girl, okay? So, Pirate Girl, hey, that's awesome. Little little uh, uh, heart on her hat, and I don't know why she has, like, this handkerchief thing. It's, like, all these colors. I was just like, let's just slap a bunch of colors on there, and it's literally, like, every color of the rainbow is on this character. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot to learn as far as design goes, and uh, even now I still have a lot of stuff to do. All right, so this is also another legendary piece because this is when I got started on DeviantArt. I learned about DeviantArt, my girlfriend at the time, she was on DeviantArt, and she was like, I'm joining this new, this new site where you can post up your artwork online, right? And so I get on there, and like half the things that I see on there are all like photo manipulations, right? That was like a big thing in the beginning of DeviantArt. So I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, I can do this, I can do this. So I just grabbed this girl, I forget who this girl is, but this is a, she sings a song. Uh, I don't know, you probably know who she is, if any of the resemblance of the face is still retained. But okay, so this is basically all the photo manipulation consisted of. It was the girl with some f color filter thrown over her, uh, lens flare somewhere, at least one, right? One is good, and then you have some, something like love, serenity, and then it's all just like pasted all over different parts of the, the picture in different opacities. And that was digital. That was digital photo manipulation. And I wanted to do it. So I did. And it was really not something that stuck with me for a very long time. This is not done by me. I don't know why this is in here. Why is this in here? I thought I took it out. I guess I forgot. Okay, next. Um, and I don't know who drew that picture. I don't know how that got in there or who drew that picture. But now they're famous. <laughs> All right, so now we're moving on to more sketchbook stuff. I was so happy. This was a sketchbook that I was looking for down in the basement. I couldn't find it, but I found the backup disc where I had the scans of the sketchbook. Like, I totally forgot that I had scanned these things in. And to this day, I still don't know where the sketchbook is. 
But uh, this was when I was learning a lot about just, um, I was just trying to explore a bunch of styles and stuff. I really got into like tag art for a while, like uh, spray paint art. I really just liked the the boldness and the designs and stuff that people did that and the flow. I think maybe that's where I started like really getting into flow. It's just like these beautiful murals that people would tag on these walls and just how all the letters and stuff would just make these awesome designs. And I said, I want to be able to do that, right? But in my own style. And I even came up with my own little tag name right here. It's Contro, right? And that's where Contro Knock comes from. Those of you who are curious about that. Alrighty then. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about this as well, because I have the actual drawing of Ruby Heart, and I'm very glad that I found this drawing again, because I'm going to be designing a character for the comic that's going to be based off of Ruby Heart very, very soon. And so I was really, really happy that I found this. And uh, she's an awesome character. I freaking love her. She's awesome! Can't hate on the pirate chick. But here is another hallmark of digital art done with the mouse. This is like one of the first things that I ever did. Clearly there's no concept of color, or value, or hue, or any of that kind. It's just like, that vest is orange, let's put some orange on there. That blue, or a blue, red, black, you know? <laughs> it's just like no value or shading whatsoever. It's just, yeah. It's all hue, there's no value. So anyway, uh, yeah, but much was learned, and I was proud of this. When I was done with it, I was like, this is so good. This is, I'm freaking good, right? <laughs> so I was always positive right at the beginning. All right, so now let's move into some more sexy anime girls, because this is basically all I did just growing up, right? And um, for those of you who have taken a look at my portfolio of shame, right, there's a reason why I call it that, because that this is basically all that is in my whole portfolio. It's just a bunch of anime girls and suggested poses. It's also good. It's also a very good hallmark. And uh, they all have a theme, right? It's like, hey, this is a police girl, fire girl, ice girl, nuclear girl, which you're going to see in a minute. Nuclear girl is going to come up. And uh, also what you're going to be seeing a lot of today is shade. Shade is, oh, wow. I, I say today, like we're still going to keep going. I think I might actually have this daily go for a little bit longer. Usually I try to go for about half an hour, but today I'm feeling, feeling good. Feeling good, so, and I really want to get through all of these today. I mean, I'm not going to take up like two hours, but you know what I'm saying. So this is shade, and we're going to go ahead and go through this. These are the old drawings. This is actually the first drawing of shade that I ever did. And shade, for those of you who don't know who that is, is actually another comic idea, right? This is another comic book idea that I had so long ago. I don't know if we can see the actual date on that. No, probably not. But uh, I remember it was in junior year of high school, so that was in 2003, 2002. And, uh, yeah, I had this idea for, like, this demon hunter girl, right? And she'd have, like, this helmet, this big metallic helmet that would somehow just stay magically on her head. And uh, she could see at night with it. It's like a night vision thing, right, over here. And, uh, yeah, I was really just getting into anime and my designs. Like, I look at these designs, I'm like, these things suck. These designs suck so bad. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's the beginning, right? It's the learning part. This, this is where we... This is where we learn. <laughs> so, yeah. And then here's some other things. Just kind of trying to get her figured out um, with the style. But it's all just like slapped together. It's really bad. But when I make this comic, it'll be based off of this. But we're going to be doing a major overhaul with her design. And let's go ahead and continue. So we got this one. Uh, this is the back shot of Shade. So we can know what she looks like from behind. And her legs appear to be broken at the heels. That uh, is quite a shame. Sorry, Shade. And then, of course, we got to have the sexy anime girl in the bed. Uh, this is Shade, too. You couldn't tell, right? It just looks like any other anime girl, and that's a problem, right? I like to have my characters be able to be recognized from anything. And then this is actually like a, a photo that I took, and then I just put like a like a filter over it, right? So it's like outside, right? Look at this amazing perspective, just like laying those things in. Ugh, that's really not so good. Not so good. And my nose is so itchy. So itchy. You guys are like two hours double daily. <laughs> uh, and you guys are actually excited about that? Ugh. No, I don't know. I don't know if I could even go for two hours. Okay, so anyway, more shade. More shade. This is me experimenting with uh, anime uh, expressions, right? Doing stuff like this. I always like this one, but... Um, I don't know. 
think I decided later on when I did my comic, I didn't want to do like super anime expressions. You know, like I kind of wanted to like bring it a little bit more to the, the western side, right? So no big teardrop on the side, no water drop on the thing there. I do the question mark thing, but uh, that's about it. Oh, and I do these. I do these things and I do question marks, but I don't like like the crazy weird faces. All right, so uh, moving on to another shade. She has like this glove thing, and she was gonna have like a tattoo or some sort of mark on her arm, but uh, yeah, I think all that stuff is gonna change. And the future, the future. All right, so this is basically two different versions of shade because I did like a younger one where she was like a little girl, and then I later decided that I wanted her to be a little bit older, so I also did this one. So, or maybe they could be like something jumping between two time shift thingies, two time dimensions, like Link, right? From Legend of Zelda. Good stuff in there. Good stuff. So now we got, yes, this is older shade, as you can tell. And this is definitely when I was into the big boobies, right? Big boob thing going on. And uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. But since then, my tastes have changed a little bit. A little bit. But, uh, yeah. That's another story for never. Uh, <laughs> so this is uh, this is new shade, right? This is the older shade, and this is the younger shade, which I think is actually still pretty dang cute. I like, I, I still like this picture a lot. And look, I was like drawing a background. Look, I painted this with my with my own mouse. I painted these buildings, and then I somehow drew a moon and put some texture on it with a mouse. I don't know how I did that, but uh, yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and continue. This is shade as a maid, right? It's like, why not? Uh, this is some more awesome digital art here. This is Spawn, and again, look at my amazing use of color. Learning a lot. And look, I was like, oh, I can put this filter on the chain to make it look like real metal, right? So I did it, I was like, that looks so awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Woo! <laughs> Good stuff. Okay, more stuff from the sketchbook, right? This is when I was really big on spray paint art, and I really like that stuff, so I was drawing a spray can. Uh, this is a guy spray painting the wall, or something like that. This is a guy about to shove a spray paint can up his butt. <laughs> I don't know. He's supposed to be dancing or something. He's like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm so cool. I tag this wall. Yeah. And he's like doing some trick or something, but it just looks like he's going to shove it up his butt. Anyway, uh, that's an armadillo. And that's a dragon and a hand of a dragon. That's a samurai. Again, like I was, I was really enjoying like working with pencil on these things because I was like experimenting with shading and all this stuff, and it was really, really fun. I, I had this with me all the time at school, and I'd be drawing. People would like look over and be like, "Whoa, that's so good! You're so good, right?" And I'd be like, "Yeah, <laughs> I like this." So like every time I was just around people, I'd always just like have it out because I wanted people to come in and feed my ego, right? Every artist has an ego to feed, and yes, I was young and uneducated, and I liked it. <laughs> Later, I've learned to real, uh, not rely on that as much. Okay, so this is actually why I wanted to go down in the basement to find this sketchbook. And be the reason was because I just recently read this book on perspective for comic book artists, right? And I learned so much in this book. And I was like, well, wait a minute, I was doing this stuff a long time ago. I was doing experiments with three-point perspective and two-point perspective a long time ago. I wonder what those look like. I really want to see what those things look like. So uh, I was going down there hoping to find these pages, and I was so happy when I found the scans of the images. And, uh, yeah, I was just like, man, like, I can do this. Like, this looks really good. This looks really good, and I was really happy about that. So, And here's another one, right? Just experimenting, like, I guess there's supposed to be buildings or something. But, um, yeah, I was just messing around and just playing around with perspective. And this was really, really awesome. But what's interesting is when I did these, when I did these and I, when I was younger, I drew these pictures and I was like, okay, that's cool. I can do this. I can do this trick, right? Or I can draw, you know, these lines. And all they got to do is just follow the same lines and go to the same vanishing point. But I just felt like I didn't have any use for it, right? I felt like I wasn't ready for it, right? And um, I knew the time would come once again when I would use this. And that time is now. What is that? Ten years later. Ten years later. All right, so for those of you who ever played StarCraft growing up, I was a huge fan of StarCraft. And I love the fact that, 
you know, you can only see like these little tiny pixelated things of what these characters look like. And then, you know, you had the little unit portrait that would animate while you're playing. And I really like that. I really like that a lot. So uh, I decided to sketch, you know, what my version of these monsters look like, what my version of the Zergs look like. This is the Defiler, that's the Overlord, and that's the Zergling. <laughs> uh, this is me doing some uh, skulls, I guess. This is supposed to, this is supposed to be a realistic skull for me. That yeah, that's not a realistic skull. But then I was like anthropomorphism of the skull. This is before I knew what that meant. I don't know if that still makes sense. I, whatever. This is just deforming of the skull and I just did some cool drawings and these were way more fun because I was like, yeah, now I can have some fun, do some flow lines, and look, I'm even throwing in that flow line right there. It's taking note. Taking note early on. Be like, I like these flowy lines. I like these flowy lines and I want to create more. All right. So now we're moving on to some alien versus predator. Uh, I drew this because I really like the aliens. I really like the aliens and the, the designs of them. And uh, the predators are pretty cool too. But uh, my favorites are the aliens, and I think I just drew them. My buddy had some action figures, and I think I used them as reference, and I like, drew them fighting. So that was pretty fun. Uh, this one is just some anime girl. It says something up here. I wrote it down. It says, I simply draw anime women because they are more of a challenge and more of a reward. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's interesting. Take that however you want. All right, moving on to faces and eyes. This is more experimentation with anime style. And I actually still look back on these eyes. I'm like, oh, they're so cute. They're so precious, right? But I think something that I was like really wanting out of my style, right? Something that I noticed was very lacking with these big pool-eyed anime girls was that they kind of look the same. They kind of look the same in every single picture. And they don't really have a wide range of emotions. There's like the scared pool-eyed girl. There's the happy pool-eyed girl. The little cat-based pool-eyed girl. And then, you know, it's just like, there's not any like, there's only so much, right? I wanted characters to be way more expressive. And that's what I'm gonna get into a little bit later as far as where my style has kind of evolved and gone to. And this is actually pretty fun. I actually really enjoy this. I, I hope you guys are enjoying this as well. Uh, this was a digital piece done for Metroid Prime when this came out on GameCube. I absolutely loved this game. And I was crazy about it. So I was like, and hey, Samus is a hot lady underneath the suit. Let's draw her. And so I did that, and I grabbed some weird bacteria thing off of Google and slapped a filter on it, and that was my background. Because I hated doing backgrounds in the old days. But uh, I was like, I need to make a wallpaper out of this, so I'm just going to do it, right? And now we move on to the awesomeness of the Zerg tentacle fantasy, right? <laughs> so this is the medic from uh, StarCraft. And yeah, for some reason I just uh, wanted to draw again, uh, freaking entangled by this weird Zerg log thing. I don't know what the heck that thing is. But regardless... Only on the Kane and Kale show will you see these things. <laughs> All right, so um, this was something. This was done for an art contest. This was probably one of the first contests that I ever entered, and this was for Dot Hack or something, whatever the heck this thing was. I don't know if it was a video game or if it was an anime show or something. All I knew is that it was a contest, and I was like, "Hey, it's anime. I kind of like the character designs. I, I'm going to do this, right? I'm going to do it." So I did, and uh, yeah. I didn't place at all, but I think some people looked at my art. Maybe some people actually liked it. And uh, yeah, that was that. <laughs> but I look at these hands, right? I look at these hands, I'm like, I still draw hands like this. You know, it's really interesting. Like, just like the things that I do with the fingers, like these two fingers, like sticking together, and then the pinky and the, the forefinger, right? Or the, yeah, forefinger. Sticking together and doing this type of thing. I still do that. And I think that's really, really interesting how there's just like little bits of style that kind of like go through the, the generations. And uh, yeah, now we're moving into the last of the shade art, and I think that's going to be about it. I think we've got a few more in here. That's Young Shade. Uh, there is one pretty kind of embarrassing picture in here. Yeah, that one! <laughs> I was like, hmm. Yes. I have not completed this character until I've drawn it from all angles, so we must do this one. 
Moving on. Uh, oh, and this one, right? We gotta know what she looks like laying down, right? Suggestively. Like, oh no, I've fallen down and I can't get up. Can you please help me? And, uh, yeah. I think this was one of the first drawings that I did of Shaden. I think this was one of the first ones. Man, look at that design. Eesh. Look at that. What is this, like a train car thing? This is pretty, it's pretty horrendous. Poses, right? Poses are very, very important. You gotta learn about that stuff. It's always good to be curious. All kinds of different poses, right? It's always good to go through that. Okay, uh, this is Raziel from Legacy of Cain doing some more digital art with the mouse. That's around. Learn a little bit about musculature and the legs and all that stuff. Uh, it's pretty, pretty simplified, but uh, this is before I learned how to preserve my lines in Photoshop as well. And I think the rest of the stuff is just all shade stuff. Oh, here's Nuclear Girl, right? And the reason you can tell it's Nuclear Girl is because of the big nuke sign on her boots, right? Otherwise, it's just any other girl. So I made sure to differentiate my pool-eyed anime girls with different symbols and different hair color and style. And uh, this was actually a redo, right? I actually redid um, these characters over and over and over again. And what's interesting is when I went back through a lot of these, I was like, oh, uh, I really want to like draw these characters again in like my new style, like do them over again. And I actually did this a few times. You'll see the very first picture that I did of Nuclear Girl a little bit later. Uh, this was uh, some experimentation with the limits of anime hair, what you could do with it. This is basically like female Sephiroth, I think. Well, hairstyle anyway. And then just drawing poses, drawing poses and drawing girls. This was, remember that, that cop girl that you saw earlier? This is actually the first rendition of it, right? And then I redid it because I was like, all right, I can draw way better now. I can draw way more sexy chicks. So I'm going to redo this cop girl. And yeah, that's about it. I think this is Mika. I think this was Mika because she is. Uh, I colored this eventually, and I gave her pink hair, and she has like two pigtails on the end. So I think this was supposed to be Mika. Moving on, uh, this is spiky hair girl with this shirt thing. I was watching the news one day, and the, one of the anchors was wearing the shirt that like kind of separated the sleeves and had little buttons that went down. I was like, oh, I actually really like that. It's, it's really cute. It's really cute. I'm going to draw an anime girl wearing that. So I drew this girl with the giant eye. Look how big that eye is. And you got to have at least four highlights in it, right? Four. Kind of bounce back and forth. I was like, oh, maybe one, maybe one circle one and then one line, right? Maybe three of them, four of them, right? And yeah, this is all just experimentation with the style. Okay, so this is the original nuclear girl. And this is, uh, yeah, this is basically where it all started. And then I redid that other one and made her boobs way bigger and then put the thing on it. So that way you can still tell, because here it's obvious. I mean, she's got the bazooka and there's a nuke going off behind her. But, uh, yeah. yeah. One thing that I actually really like about Nuclear Girl is her hair. I totally forgot about this. kind of like separates into like little strands and then it kind of like comes to an arrow down here. So it's almost like a... It's almost like a, uh, like a chevron, right? It's almost like a chevron, like an army rank. That's kind of cool. I never realized that before. Very, very interesting. Next. Okay, so this is Mika right here. See, she has like those little pigtails going out the side. And she's basically just the freaking pink haired maid girl. You've seen a million of those. And we're back to the start on that one. So, that wraps up everything that is in the early stages, right? Learning about anime style. Trying to figure out like where I want to go, what I want to do experimenting, dabbling a little bit in comics and a lot of type stuff. So once I did that, uh, I'm going to talk about getting out of high school. And I went to a place called Sandman Studios. And while I was there, I did a lot of stuff in the early stages, right? I, uh, I did a little bit of concept art for this game called Vermont, but I didn't, I didn't actually concept the creatures. I just like concepted color changes, right? So it wasn't anything crazy. But uh, I was just kind of doing grunt work in the beginning, and then eventually what happened was my boss, Lee, wanted to create this book. And he tasked me with creating the concept images that they would then later create 3D models of and then screenshot it so it looked like it was from a movie, right? Like Toy Story or something. And um, eventually what happened is when the company started going under and we started having financial issues, he was like, you know what? I think I just want you to illustrate it, right? You just illustrate the whole book, which is secretly what I wanted all along. So it's interesting how 
things happen. Things happen that may seem bad, but you know, in the end, it might just be working out to your advantage. So we're just going to scroll through a few of these. I'm not going to show you every illustration because then, you know, you wouldn't want to buy the book, right? But um, these are like some concept images of uh, just Mimi. And Mimi's the girl, and then this is Mrs. Sleet. And this is Mayor Coldstone. And the basic synopsis of the story is little girl brings these humbugs to a town that's forgotten about Christmas. It's like frozen over, and all the people are cold and mean. But the humbugs sing, and they attract the reindeer of Santa. Santa comes back to town, and then everybody believes again, and it becomes a warm Christmas town. And it's very, very fun. And during that time, I had the concept of the humbugs, right? So this is the caterpillar, uh, and you'll see some more as we go along. Uh, and, but what was interesting is this opportunity ended up being a huge thing for me because a lot of you know I'm actually self-taught. I never went to college and I never got a degree or anything. So when it came time for me to apply a riot and go in there and get my interview, basically I didn't have anything to show as far as a degree or where I went to college. But what I did have was work that I had already done in the industry, right? My portfolio was built out and I had concepted these characters. And little did I know like how good this was gonna be Little did I know how good this was going to look when I went in, right? Showing that I had actually like concepted these characters from the ground up. I, I created this world, you know, from a story and decided, you know, like what these characters are going to look like. And that's me right there. I actually hid myself in the thing. That was back when my facial hair actually looked like that. It doesn't look like that anymore. And that's probably a good thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, you know, just like I didn't realize how cool it was going to be uh, to create a world and create these characters and illustrate these, these pages. And uh, it ended up working out really, really well. And here's the other thing. Um, I can't remember exactly how much time went by between me doing the initial drawings of the book and then I actually came back, right? I started the beginning of the book, right? Um, I started illustrating the book. And what I noticed is after a little while, I, I wasn't really liking the way that the illustrations were coming out. They just didn't have that dynamic feeling to them. They just didn't. I didn't feel like it was my best work, and I didn't feel like I was ready. But luckily, my good friend, I met a guy there by the name of Andrew Young. He was a coworker there, and he was doing some he was doing some painting there, and he taught me so much. He taught me so much about painting and just like creating camera angles and storyboarding. And I basically went from this, right? This was going to be the original drawing, the original illustration for the book, and it's basically. Mrs. Sleet leaving this uh, room and she's like ticked off, right? And, you know, so, you know, look at how, look at the emotion in this, right? And it's just kind of okay, like, okay, she's clearly leaving the room angry and all that stuff. And something happened. But what I did was when I went back the second time on this, I just had this vision. Like, I had the visions of how to frame these things and how to create the image. And then I went from that to this, right? So now it's like a lower angle, right? Creating this power of her leaving the room, you know, and then the, the doors are open outward as, as opposed to opening inward, right? And so she just flung these things open. And then another thing that was cool that happened, kind of by accident, but I liked it, was uh, I realized, oh, I can put like these cracks in the, the ceiling, like where the frost is, and it's kind of like creating this really cool texture and just like feeling of unease and anger and, and like all these things I learned from Andrew, right? Or he taught me, uh, you know, the basics, and then I kind of ran from it, took it from there, and I was like, whoa, this is so cool. So I felt like a huge jump in my artwork from the time that I was working there to, you know, by the time I was done. And I guess what I want you guys to take from that is sometimes I believe the best teachers, the best ways for you to learn is get around people who are doing what you want to do, right? Get around people who know how to paint the way that you do. Get around people who know how to you know, create emotion or create flow and all that stuff. And, you know, I'll teach you as much as I can with that too, but nothing beats knowing somebody in real life and be like, hey, can you show me exactly how you do that? And, you know, people are actually very, very willing to give and help and uh, educate you, right? And that's basically how I learned to do art, <laughs> by standing on the shoulders of other giants. So uh, this is another humbug. This is Hopper. He's the cricket one. And this is another example of just concept art for the town. And then this is what it turned into when I was all done painting and creating it. And I learned so much doing this book. Like when I was done with these paintings, I would look at them and I was like, man, 
like I'm really doing this. Like I can do this stuff. I know how to like create a vision and like see it through. And I was really, really excited and just happy and kind of proud of myself. I felt like I was moving. I was making that progress to where I wanted to be uh, towards being a digital artist. And I finally felt like I was just getting it and just like lighting and color. And, you know, uh, this was an interesting page because I had to draw these humbugs on the windowsill. And I was like, oh, but I can draw the whole town behind them too. It's like there's going to be so much detail in that. And I can draw all these people and stuff, and that's going to be a nightmare. But then um, I was watching, uh, I think I was watching Home Alone. And there's a part where he's in the church, right, before the creepy shovel man comes up and talks to him, and he realizes it's actually really nice. But And there's a lot of movies that they do this. It's just a focal trick, right, where all the lights in the background just become these little circles. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I wonder if I could just do that. I wonder if I could just focus in on these little bugs on the windowsill and then just draw the background as like these circles. And I tried it out and it totally worked. I was like, wow, I would have never thought of that before. Like, that's so cool how you can still even look at it and your eyes still tell you that, oh, you know, there's a whole background back there. There's, there's a whole city and, you know, there's lights back there. But the focal trick just makes it work. I was like, man, I'm learning so much by doing this stuff. And, uh, you know, I was just having a lot of fun. So working at Sandman was definitely one of the funnest points in, in terms of just like growing and learning that I've had. And I think that's really where I get the most joy from is just learning and kind of being challenged, being challenged and then overcoming it. And I think that's just what art is supposed to be. That's what life is supposed to be for me. I, I really believe that's what it's supposed to be for me. And I think that's what it's supposed to be for a lot of people who feel like, you know, they're just kind of coasting along. They're kind of, I don't want to get all philosophical and everything. That's for tomorrow, right? But in general, I feel like you should always be challenging yourself. There should always be something else that you want, right? And just take pride in the fact that that's where your real happiness comes from. That's where your real joy comes from. And so uh, soon after I finished this book, uh, I illustrated a second one as well. And that was Bo and the Beanstalk. That's Bo and the Beanstalk, not Bo and the Beanstalk. <laughs> I think we need to change his name so it doesn't sound like a naughty term. But regardless. Uh, that was the end of Humbug, and I started illustrating that second book. But unfortunately, right when I finished it, Sandman contacted me and said that they weren't going to be able to pay me for a substantial amount of work, which is okay. Totally understand. Stuff happens, and since then I've let it go, right? If they can get it back to me eventually. If they want me to work for them again, obviously they're going to have to pay me back. But since then, I called my old boss, Lee, and I told him, hey, you know what? You're going to get it to me when you get it to me. I'm not going to bug you about it anymore. And as far as I'm concerned, we're still friends, and I don't want you to feel afraid to talk to me. So I told him that because Lee really is a great guy, and I really do care about him. And I really feel honored and um, very privileged that he gave me the chance to um, get the experience, right? Because like I said, I believe it was very pivotal in getting the job at Riot. So the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is a little bit of storyboarding. And this was one of the final things that I did while I was working at Sandman. And this actually went hand in hand with creating comics, right? Because I was like, oh, it's basically like creating, you know, just panel to panel. And it was really, really fun. And this was for a brand called BioAdaptive. I don't know if it, anything went out with it, but it was like an energy drink or something like that. It was like a power bar, an energy drink, and all this stuff. So it was just like going through all these different scenarios, like military. And there's like this hunter dude, right? And he's going with his friends and they're chilling and eating like macaroni salad or something while they're out hunting. And then we go to like some fundraiser with some kids and it's like, hey, you can use bioadaptive everywhere. You should buy millions of dollars of our product right now. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I was just doing that. And I think um, I also did some other story words, but unfortunately I can't show you those because those are part of projects that have not been released yet. Um, but during those during that time, I realized, man, I really like doing this sequential art, right? Telling a story with just panels. And uh, slowly but surely, I started to notice that I was really getting into um, creating comics, creating comics. And, uh, but I set my eyes on something much bigger because something came into my life called League of Legends. And this was probably one of the best, like, I don't know, probably one of the best opportunities and best jobs that I could have ever asked for. Working at Riot and working with League of Legends was literally my dream job. It was what I had worked my entire life to get to. I couldn't have imagined a better job for me. 
because the reason why it was was that way it was because I loved illustrating things. I loved taking their characters and just the finished product and then just creating a final image for it. Just like creating an illustration. I don't have to determine, I don't have to design anything because I suck at designs. You know, or at the time, I'm getting better now that I have to, but I didn't like designing stuff. I just like illustrating. So I get into this company and I find out, man, I can just create these pictures. I can just draw basically fan art of these skins and get paid for it, right? <laughs> I was like, this is so awesome. And, you know, granted, there was a lot of learning involved as well because I had to step up my game, especially when Katie De De Souza went in there, right? Because she was freaking awesome. And when I saw her work, I think one of the first things I saw from her was Vane. And uh, let me just check over here, make sure everything is still good, right? You guys can still hear me? Okay, good. All right, awesome. But anyway, uh, yeah, I saw Vane. I was like, oh man, like this girl's good. I'm gonna have to step up my game, right? If I'm gonna want to work here. <laughs> so um, again, I studied. I studied Katie DeSouza's art, and I was like, man, okay, this is cool. I noticed like she just makes everything look kind of shiny, right? Little did I know this is what rendering is, right? Just creating the material and making it shiny if it's metal and you know latex or whatever these chicks are running around with in the League de Leyendas. But um, I learned so much while I was working here. And again, this goes back to if you want to improve as an artist, get around people that are doing what you want to do and people that are just kicking ass at it, right? <laughs> get around people that just kick ass and you will learn very, very quickly their tricks and you'll just, you'll grow, right? Because you're just surrounded with these people. You're surrounded with these people and they just inspire you and they make you want to be better. And that was really the biggest thing that I loved about working with my team, my splash art team. At Riot was we're just like the coolest artists in the world, and we're always pushing each other to just get better and get better and get better and get better. And eventually, um, we started really. We got we finally got our art director, and um, we uh, they started really wanted to push for the super clean style. And uh, a lot of you guys know this story. Uh, I was one of the ones that kind of stood up and um, I was like, well, I kind of like something about the old splashes, right? Kind of like how the old splashes have this sort of painterly background, you know, how it's not really that important, but then there's a lot of detail in the character. I feel like there's something about that that is the Riot style. And of course, this is totally biased because, you know, that's like my art, that's my art style, right? So I could totally understand them being like, you know, no, we really want to do this and, you know, not really listen to me. Oh, oh my nose is so itchy. Not that I'm saying they just ignored me, but you know what I'm saying. Like, I just stood up and I was basically like, I think that there's something that we're losing, right? That's all I said. I think that we're going to be losing something if we go for the super refined, everything's just like cleaned up and perfect style. But uh, they wanted to just have like this AAA game, and I totally understand. And you know what? To be honest, like their art right now is so beyond amazing. Like I'm happy that they continued to, to go with that, and they really owned up to it. But for me personally, I didn't want to do that. I didn't really enjoy spending so much time just like rendering and rendering like Diana was probably the best example of what I did right because Diana you know I went in here and I rendered all these materials and all these little you know, the pearlescence going on in there and the background is still pretty painterly compared to something that they do today like this probably wouldn't pass for a splash uh, background but um, it just got to the point where I don't know. I, I attribute it to my ADD because I get so tired of stuff really. I get tired of stuff really, really quickly, right? And I just want to move on to something else. So spending weeks and weeks and weeks on just like rendering these materials on this character's suit and just like the weapons and the background and stuff, it would just get to me, right? And I'd come into every day and just like stare at the same picture and just work on it for eight hours a day. And it would just go on like that for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I just started to kind of drain on me, right? Because before, when I was doing these, like this, these splashes took like a few days, right? And then it just jumped up to three weeks. And not to mention just all the stress of like going to work back and forth and all that stuff. You know, so after a while, I started to realize that, um, you know, as much as I love doing the splashes and I enjoyed the experience that I got there, I realized that I had basically absorbed everything that I could from it. I felt like I had just learned everything that I wanted to learn and I'd taken it as far as I wanted to take it. And I just felt like anything else, you know, beyond this, beyond just like rendering it to the point where it looks good to me, right? 
to the point where everything now becomes photorealistic and it's just like all these materials and you know just like filters and stuff like that that kind of art just didn't interest me to put it bluntly and I just found myself not enjoying my work as much as I used to so um, but I did agree I, I mean I talked everything over with my slash art team and you know I was like you know what this is all about the team right if this is what you guys want to do I'll do it but I just let you know right now that the way that we're going I'm not gonna enjoy doing this I'm not gonna enjoy it and um, so yeah I mean that's that's a little bit of my story and uh, yeah so it's an interesting story and again there's no real hard feelings against you know my splash team or riot at all again I'm very very grateful for the experience and everything that I learned from the amazing team of artists that I got to work with but basically towards the end there it just came down to a simple issue of me just I wasn't satisfied I, I just felt like I wasn't doing what I like to do anymore and I felt like I wasn't gaining anything I felt like I wasn't growing anymore growing to be anything that I wanted to be so that leads us to the next thing <laughs> so before I worked at Riot I had this idea I had this idea for a comic book that I really wanted to do and it all started with this drawing right here and it was this little girl with an axe on her back and then these zombies behind her and I drew this I drew this as a sort of a oh wow we've actually been going for 55 minutes alright we're gonna be finishing up here in the next 10 minutes so I won't keep you guys for very long but I hope you guys have been enjoying this so far but um, yeah so I did this picture for a friend and I drew this little girl right with these zombies behind her I was like hey something about that like I instantly just gravitated to her I was like yeah, just like the shape of this face and like the eyes, like the way that they're kind of like triangled out. Like, I really like that. Something about that just really caught my eye. And I was like, you know, that would be really cool to make a comic about this someday, right? And my idea was just basically, hey, little girl killing zombies, right? That would be really cool. And so um, I always just kind of like hung on to that. I always hung on to that. And I also did this one here. And this was before uh, Emma had her signature boots, right? And uh, we'll get into that in just a sec. So towards the end of working at Riot, I was sitting there uh, one day just working, and I was listening to The Alchemist on tape. And this was at a point where I was, like I said, I just felt like I wasn't growing anymore. I felt like it was the same thing every day, and it's just I wasn't going where I wanted to go, even though I'd worked my entire life to get there. And then I just I remembered that I had that idea for the comic. And I asked myself, when am I going to do this? When am I really going to step out and just take this chance and do this? And uh, I was listening to The Alchemist, which is a dangerous thing already, right? And of course, I finish it. I finish The Alchemist on tape, and I just like step back, and I'm like, I, I literally saw everything that was going to happen. I was like, I am going to quit my job, and I'm going to make this comic. Like, it was so weird. Like, it was so clear that that instant I just knew exactly what was gonna happen and it was a really really exciting moment so anyway I knew I was gonna make Emma and now it's happening like right before my eyes and it's really really cool so um, let's go ahead and just jump through uh, some of these style things right because this triangle eye thing that was going on I was like I really like this thing that's going on we're gonna kinda dialed it down a little bit from the gigantic eyes that are on this girl but um, regardless, I, I felt like there was something there. I was really kind of looking to, to find what was within the styles. The diamond in the rough, and I had to figure it out. So I also did this one here. This is like a zombie girl. And I think this is when I discovered that like red blood with cartoony like figures or just like characters just looks really weird to me. It looks kind of like, like cheesy. It looks cheesy, and it also looks kind of disturbing. So... Um, I don't know, that kind of sat up here. It was like a seed, and eventually I ended up changing the blood color of the zombies to purple. And that ended up working out pretty well. So now, uh, we're moving on to something else. Okay, so this is where Emma got her boots. I was brainstorming the story with my friend David, right? He's the, he's the uh, creative director, the uh, story developer with me on the stuff, right? And he writes a lot of the stuff now, writes a lot of the story. And um, he just came up to me this one day, and he's like, you know, Keenan, I think Emma should just have these big old combat boots, right? She just have these big boots. And I was like, oh, I, I, don't, I don't know. She's so cute with the little with the little things, right? She's got the cute little girl shoes. You can't just replace those, right? 
And so I was sitting at work one day and I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> this is kind of funny, guys, saying that I was working on Emma at, at Riot. But uh, <laughs> uh, I was drawing these boots. I feel like these tiny little boots on Emma. And so then I showed it to David, and he's like, no, they need to be way bigger. They need to be gigantic, like huge. So I was like, oh, okay. And then I drew them bigger, right? And then um, he's like, yeah, yeah, that's how big they need to be. And they basically went up her, basically almost to her knee, right? So they're like that. He's like, that's that's it right there. And then I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, you know what? That is really nice. That was really good. So that was when I determined that when when David says an idea to me, that at first I'm like, ooh, that's probably really weird. It's probably going to be a good idea, and we should just run with it. So anyway, moving on. Uh, this is more anime style, more triangle eye stuff going on there. This is Metal Slugger. And again, look, this is me working in my sketchbook, trying to figure out how this style works, right? Really didn't like this, so I crossed it out. But I was like, okay, so how does the eye work? How does it look when you like turn the face? And I had this problem where I couldn't draw the same face twice. And that was because I hadn't yet figured out that I can do stuff like this, right? I couldn't do stuff like this. Where I basically just like measure out the, the facial features and then I can just replicate the face over and over again. And a lot of that also had to do with this here. I did that um, those studies in this area, right? And making all these little notes for Emma and how her eyes open, and you know, like how they close. And this was all stuff that I didn't think I was going to have to do, but very quickly after I released part one of issue one, I was like, shoot, this character looks different in a few of these panels. And I really need to nail down this style, and I'm really, really glad I did now. And so that's the way I do it now for every character because it's very, very important to be consistent in your drawings. So, yeah, and then there's another drawing of the elf girl. And that's Wayna, the elf girl. And so, uh, quitting the job at Riot, I decided to make the comic. And that leads us to where we are today. So, in summary, let's go ahead and talk about Mika. Because Mika is the latest thing that I did, that I drew, basically. And this is like my old kind of just experimentation and exploration of anime style. And then with the side comic that's going to be coming out with issue two, I was experimenting with these faces here, these simplified kind of adventure timey faces. But re what really stuck out to me was this head shape, and I really, really liked it. So I took it from there and I decided to do this, right? And I really feel like this is going to be where I'm going now. This this style could be something that I I really see myself developing it into something, right? Maybe, in, I mean, it is basically Emma. You know, it's Emma's style, just a little bit more exaggerated in some areas. Like, her head's kind of tilted back a little bit more. So it might just work its way into the comic just a tad bit, but don't worry, it's not going to, like, change, like, over, like, it's not going to be, like, completely different. But uh, I'm really, really enjoying this style. I feel like there's a lot of depth and just character in these faces. And that's something that I really wanted out of my anime style, was just, you know, like, I want you to be able to look at these characters' faces and their emotion, and, like, almost just, like, feel how they feel, right? Because with these pool-eyed anime girls, it's like, they're just, you know, they're like dolls, you know? It's like, they don't have any real emotion, and I wanted something more than that. I wanted you to be able to look into them and just have that little bit of extra flavor that we call emotion. So yeah guys, with that all said, I will take a couple questions and then we're going to end. Man, we went for an hour today. That's crazy. Woo! Oh man. In fact, um, let me see if you guys asked any right now and then we'll go ahead and end today. Oh yeah, I said I was going to show you guys some stuff in the sketchbook. I guess I can do that right now. I'll do that right now. Because I do have to thank Larry Ray. Larry Ray is the guy that actually started all of this with uh, the style of Emma, anyway. Because I kept showing him these drawings when I was getting the comic book ready, when I was getting the style ready. I was drawing these pictures of Emma in my sketchbook, right? And I kept showing these to Larry, and he's like, man, dude, if you're going to do a comic, you really need to simplify the style. You really need to figure out how you're going to simplify this character because you're going to be drawing it hundreds of times. And if, you know, you draw the hair like that and all that stuff, it's going to take you a while. So eventually I was like, okay, well, is this one good enough? And he was like, nope, it has to be simpler. 
And I was like, okay, fine, Larry, why don't you show me how to do it? And so he took my sketchbook and he drew this right here. He drew that picture of Emma right there. And when I looked at that, I was like, whoa, that's awesome. <laughs> it's like the, the hair is one shape and the face is like one shape, right? And then he just slapped the eyes and the nose and everything on there. I was like, that's brilliant. So then I took that and I made that face and I kind of experimented with a couple other things. That one's a little more gothic, Emma, but I eventually ended up going with one that's a little bit more like that. And then came up to the final style, which was this right here. So yeah, Larry is basically the reason why Emma looks the way that she does right there. Because if not, she'd probably look a little bit more detailed, but I probably would have gotten cra gone crazy and jumped out of a window or something by now. So special thanks to Larry. And uh, yeah, I think that's another big reason why I'm heading towards a style like this. Alrighty then. A couple questions and then we're out. Um, Simon is asking, so what kind of person should you write a comic with? Oh, this is a great question. Great question. So great, you are shedding light on the room once more. Alright, so the kind of person you should be writing a comic with is the kind of person that's not afraid to come up with stupid ideas, right? The dumber the idea, the more crazy the idea, the better. That's the kind of person you want to be writing a comic with because A, they they don't have they, they don't really invest themselves and worry about everything being perfect, right? When they're throwing chucking out ideas, be like, "Hey, what if uh, Emma found a donkey with a cannon strapped to it?" right? Those are the kind of ideas that we like to come up with. And sometimes like the best ideas that have gone into Emma so far have been crazy ideas. So, uh, someone who knows how to brainstorm, someone who doesn't have their ego in it. Someone who's enthusiastic, right? You gotta be working and writing with somebody who's enthusiastic, who believes in the project, who has fun while they're doing it, and you know they're they're into it because of the work, right? Of course, you can be like, oh yeah, well we want to make a business, we want to make money, and all this stuff, and those can all be good motivators too. But I really think that the biggest thing is just the the amazing feeling of creating something from nothing out of like these characters didn't exist, right? I made these, right? We made these, <laughs> and it was all just up here, and now it's literally out for everybody to see. That in itself is a miracle, and worth being an artist for in itself. Alrighty then. Things you want to avoid is, uh, you know, just the opposite. People that take things too seriously. People that don't throw out crazy ideas. People that, you know, they work so long on something, they bring it to you, and then if you shoot it down or say you don't like it, they get all butthurt about it because you know they emotionally invested themselves in it. So uh, people that just worry too much about everything being perfect, you want to stay away from that. Stay away! Man, you guys talked a lot today. Uh, I do apologize. I'm not able to get not able to get a lot of your comments here. Oh, Hogan Warfare is asking: When you study a painting, what do you actually study? Oh. Um, oh man, you guys got so many good questions today. Um, okay, uh, <laughs> when I study paintings, it just depends on what I'm going for. Sometimes uh, when I was studying Katie's paintings, I was studying the way that she rendered the metals and just made everything look shiny. I was like, whoa, that's so cool how you do that. And then I just studied that and that was it. Uh, other times I would study, you know, how this person would draw sexy ladies, right? They're like, oh, hey, I like that. And at first I would actually just copy it. Right? I literally just copy, be like, hey, Ruby Hart's a sexy lady from Marvel vs. Capcom. I'm just going to draw her and straight up copy it. And then eventually, I think that when you do that, you like retain things. You take a piece of that, that style, take a piece of that picture, and you like put it in your mind. You put it into the, the Katamari, right? The giant Katamari that will roll around and absorb everything and become your style. So yeah, that's what I like to do. <laughs> All right. Let us see... Two more questions, then I'm done, because you guys have awesome questions. And in the meantime, we'll pull up epic outro music. Captain Big Bud is asking, whose idea was it to make Emma attack Nico with a toothbrush? <laughs> oh, man. I think that was a combination of Jake. Back when I was writing the story with him, he we were doing the toothbrush scene, and I was like, oh, wouldn't that be funny if when she goes out to meet Nico, she still has the toothbrush and, like, tries to attack him with it, or she, like, sticks it in some dude's mouth, right, when he, like, tries to come up and grab her. 
because we were thinking of like the the bikers would come in and like kidnap her or whatever. And so uh, that was a combination of me and Jake working on that. Jake was the old writer. He was the old guy that I was writing the story with. But unfortunately, he could not stay with it. But that's okay. It's okay. Making comics is not cut out for everybody. All right. Last question is coming in from Artyo. Dissave. I cannot pronounce that name for the heck of it. So you are now Art. And he's asking a good question. He's saying, since Emma is free and it takes so much time, what is your main money source now? <laughs> this is a good question. <laughs> and actually one that I have been thinking about lately. One, uh, uh, to elaborate on that is um, the way when I quit my job I saved up about six months worth of rent money so I could just make this comic see if I could make the comic and lo and behold six months passed and I did I made the website I learned everything about making the comic and it started to come out and people loved it you guys loved it and I loved it so I was like you know what this is really really awesome and uh, the way that I make money now is actually just doing contract work for Riot still. I still am on good terms with them, and I still love working with them doing concept work. And um, because I'm not doing splashes anymore, obviously, because you don't see any of them, and I really don't enjoy doing them that much. It's just not really my style anymore. But I love doing concept art, and it's really helping me out, too, because I'm learning about like creating things, like designing things. I suck at designing things so badly, but I'm learning really, really quickly, and I'm getting that enjoyment of... of um, the, uh, progressing, right? Progressing and absorbing knowledge. And that is very, very awesome. So yeah, I'm just basically working on the side, on contract, when I need to, to make some money, pay the rent, do stuff. And luckily my parents are willing to support me and help me out and have me move back here and live with them for the time being. However, I really believe in being my own man and I want to get my own place as soon as possible. And that may be happening very soon because, you know, I want to almost, I, I think of myself as you know, when it's all said and done, I kind of want to be an example to people, right? It's like, hey, you have a dream, you want to tell a story, you want to make a comic, you might run into this too. Like, watch these dailies, watch the story of Keenan Lafferty and Kay and Kale Comics and Emma. You know, later on when it's a multi-million dollar empire, right? Realize that at the beginning, it was just a kid with a dream and his main priority and his main goal, and it should always be my main goal. Is just to tell my story. It's just to tell my story and it's just to make the comic. And everything that comes from it after that is just, you know, extra stuff. It's just extra stuff because the real happiness and the real joy for me, it just comes from making the comic. It's not about making money. It's not anything about that. The only thing that money permits me to do uh, from the little that I make off of, you know, selling the, the digital editions and the posters and stuff. And you guys have been so supportive with that stuff. I really do appreciate that. But you guys have been donating. You guys have been buying the digital editions. You've been buying the posters. And uh, I want to create other um, products, right? I want to create other opportunities for people that really enjoy it and find value in the product to give back, right? If you want to be able to pay for it and help support it, I want you guys to be able to have more options, like give me more stuff. So that stuff is going to be coming up very, very soon, too. And again, I want to thank every each and every one of you that has helped out this far. And again, Emma, I've said this once, and I'll say it again. Emma, you will never have to pay to read Emma. Never. Ever will you ever have to pay to read Emma. Okay? Good. Future comics? I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. But Emma is going to be free. <laughs> uh, yeah, and Emma, I plan on Emma going for a long time. But it, it's it's such a... It's such a pleasure. It's such a pleasure just making comics. Making comics and telling a story and people enjoying it. And I really like it. And I know now that this is going to be the rest of my life. I know that it's just, I get so much joy from doing this that this is going to be what the rest of my life is. I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. And, uh, yeah, just creating comics and creating stories. And I might not always be, like, physically doing it, but you know what I mean? Like, I want to create something, whether it's going to be, like, a cartoon, whether I'm going to become a cartoon eventually, you know. But, um, you know, I always be interested in telling a story. All right, guys, I don't want to take up too much of your time because this has been like 15 minutes and we have had a crazy day. I want to thank each and every one of you for asking me to share my old art and joining me on Ustream. People on YouTube, thumbs up if you like it, thumbs down if you don't. My name is Keenan Lafferty. I'll see you guys tomorrow for tutorial. Thoughtful Thursday, right? And we'll talk a little bit more about the things I was touching on at the end of this episode. So you guys take care of yourselves and I'll see you tomorrow. Later.